Python editor added to Excel. And hey, just a quick shout out to Waldemar on Unsplash.com. If, if you're ever looking for silo photos as a metaphor for corporate environments, boy, this guy has just some beautiful, beautiful photos out there. There are times where you would really want to know the backstory between something. August 22nd, 2023, Python debuts in Excel, and 27 days later, the editor arrives. Now, you know, there's a couple of theories. One theory could be that the editor just took longer than Python. Or another theory is that the people in Redmond debuted Python, and then the people at Excel Labs in Cambridge took a look at that and said, you know, we can make this better, right? And if that theory is the one, if they spun this up, in, in 27 days and tested it and rolled it out to us, that's just, that's amazing. Kudos, if that's the way it went down. All right, first off, to get this, you're gonna go to Get Add-ins, which forever has been on the Insert tab, but it sounds like they're moving it to the Home tab. Here on my Excel, it's on the Home tab. That could just be an experiment though. So it's either on the Insert tab under Get Add-ins or on the Home tab. You'll choose Add-ins and then go look for Excel Labs. Now, if you've already downloaded the Advanced Formula environment, you probably already have the icon out here. And when you click it, it says that we need to update now. So go ahead and click Update Now. Hmm. Okay, while well, I pause the video there, uh, Excel Labs disappeared. So I went to Add-ins, My Add-ins, See All, Excel Labs, Add, clicked on Excel Labs, clicked on Update Now again, and that seemed to have worked. I, I don't know why it took two tries. Uh, so the advanced formula environment, we've had this putting chat GPT in Excel thing, and then down here, the Python editor, that's the amazing part. All right, so here's a workbook from a month ago where we were building Python in the formula bar. Come here to Excel Labs, scroll down and open the Python editor, minimize the formula bar now. All right, first thing, uh, we should be able to expand the editor here. For some reason, that's not working for me today, but it's easy enough just to expand it, all right? Uh, check this out. We have a choice of uh, all Python cells or just the selected Python cell. So if you wanna work in one cell, uh, you can do that. This particular cell just happens to be returning a data frame. It's almost like the console showing you the output, uh, you know, a preview of what the data frame is gonna look like. We'll go back to all Python cells. The code is, is color coded. So comments in green. Uh, it's just so much better to work in this uh, instead of in the formula bar, right? Uh, a couple things. They said that uh, if the preview is an image here, uh, that that is not working right now. So they can't render images in the pane yet. So if you if you're currently on a Python cell, the choice down here is to add a Python cell at the bottom. But if you choose a cell that's not a Python cell, uh, then it'll say add Python cell in the active cell. You can write some code here. Oh, look at that autocomplete, shows all the choices. It's just crazy that for, you know, for three or four weeks we've been writing Python without autocomplete and working in the formula bar. Uh, it just feels like this is uh, an entire order of magnitude better than what we've had. Once you get your code, uh, you're going to choose whether you're going to do a Python object or convert to Excel values and then save it to the cell. It's not until you save it to the cell that it actually gets written there. Here's a brand new workbook and I just want to create a data frame to point to that range. You know, with Control Alt Shift P, it's easy. We just Let's say df equals and then select the range and it'll build that syntax for us. I'm going to escape there and say add Python cell in F3. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't work. We can't select the cell and have it uh, fill in the Excel for us. So you're going to have to type the Excel and everything headers equals true. See, we're going to return this as convert to Excel values. We'll just show DF and save. All right, so we get our Python output. And then I'll come down here to another cell. And DF equals dot sort on 
values and we want to sort by sales. Return that as Excel values and save. All right, and we've sorted high to low. I love that this is a scratch pad out here in the task pane. So let's say I'm in the middle of writing some code and I need to go look something up, right? I don't have to commit this code. I can just leave it over here in the task pane and go select a cell, go select another sheet, go out to YouTube and watch a video or something like that, and then come back and finish it and uh, click save. That's really nice. It also said if we go to manual calculation mode uh, that you know then you can, in essence, change just one Python cell and have only that cell calculate when you commit. You don't have to run everything. So there's certainly advantages there. All right, just uh, this is this is a great improvement from the Excel Labs people in Cambridge, and uh, it's hard to believe that we've, you know, been writing Python without this now that we have it. All right, well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel. If you like these videos, please down below like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below.